Dreams Influence Initiative. Hello and welcome to FCM Presents Redefining Corporate Travel Management. Corporate travel is a deeply fragmented space, on top of which corporate travel is one of the highest operational costs that most companies incur, which leads us to the question, what can make business travel more business friendly? Fortunately, to tackle this very topic, I'm joined by a panel of subject matter experts, who include Rakshit Desai, Managing Director, FCM Travel Solutions. Jadeep Ghosh, Partner, COO, Head of Transport, Leisure and Sports, KPMG India. Sanjay Pai, Industry Expert and Head of Travel, Large Conglomerate. So gentlemen, let's kick off the conversation with some facts and figures. Global business travel spend is growing at a rate of upwards of 10% year on year. My first question, what slice of the pie does India comprise? And I'll start with you, Rakshit. So, you know, the global um, business travel market is growing at double dig digits, and I think that's fairly evident, and most of the data would support that. Um, but if you if you look at India, uh, you know, if travel penetration in India is pretty low. Uh, 20 million outbound trips last year on a base of 1.4 billion passengers. That's 1.5% international travel penetration. Even if you took total air travel penetration in India, it's 10% of the general population. It's uh, on the cusp of breaking into the top five business travel markets uh, in the world. So, you know, it's a single digit percentage share of the of the global market, but, uh, you know, 15 years ago it was negligible. Uh, today it's borderline significant, and in 10 or 15 years you don't know it might be dominant. Well, that leads me to my next question, Jaydeep, and that is what are the nuances of the new age corporate traveler, and how have the dynamics of business travel evolved as a result? Yeah, firstly, I think, let me just add to what, you know, Rakshit uh, did, did mention. So sure. just to sum that up, uh, while uh, globally the business travel would be, you know, expected to grow in the range of, say, 5 to 6 percent per annum for the next five years, India definitely would grow at about, you know, 11 to 12 percent. So that means the growth is clearly going to happen. Absolutely. In terms of uh, the new age corporate traveler, I think one a basic theme, what has changed, is that the boundaries between the corporate travel and leisure travel has almost kind of blurred. The new age traveler, A, is, uh, needs those you know, flexibility, needs that freedom, and also a simple you know, interface. Specifically coming to India, given the, in our profile of uh, very young population, it, it's the millennials, roughly speaking, people born in 1980s until you know, early 1990s, those are going to drive the business in future. So they are mostly you know, tech savvy, very, very mobile savvy, and you know, very keen to have new experiences, unique experiences, innovation, and, and so on and so forth. Well, Dr. Pai, do you agree with that point of view that the lines are blurring between corporate travel and leisure travel? And you know, just to play devil's advocate for a moment, one way in which corporate travel is certainly different from leisure travel amongst the millennial generation is that for that generation, method of corporate travel seems to really be a reflection of their professional growth, their professional success. Your thoughts? See, I agree with Jaydeep. Earlier there was an embargation of mice vis-a-vis -vis the corporate travel. And corporate travel earlier didn't have any identity as such. Like what we have in aviation now, business jets or business aviation doesn't have any differential with the commercial aviation. People are now moving to a globalization of digital uh, platforms wherein they have started expecting many things which is used for both the mice as well as the corporate travel. It is evolving very, very fast. Like Rakshit said, we we have to be prepared for delivering what are, what are, whatever the expectations are from uh, from the traveler's perspective, from the corporate uh, perspective, and people have to be ready from the technological platform. And the gaps are there for a person to fill in, wherein uh, uh, the TMCs and the corporate managers are uh, are trying their best to bring innovations in that field. It's no more a pure delivery of a ticket. It's, it's basically fulfill, fulfilling the expectations and the experience of the travelers. One point you brought up was bridging the gaps, which I'd like to talk more about. You know, Rakshit, what do you consider to be some of the leading loopholes in corporate travel management today? You know, one overwhelming criticism of corporate travel management is that there is a lack of transparency. There isn't perhaps a strong conviction that it delivers 
business value? Your thoughts? Look, I think, you know, it depends on whether you start from a position of trust. All right. You you typically, I think, when people talk about uh, lack of transparency, it's it's with respect to whether your service partner is is putting all of the information in front of you uh, uh, in order to enable you to make an informed purchase decision. Now, the the travel ecosystem is so complex. Look at the the you know the, the different sources of content. You have air inventory, you have hotel inventory, you have cars, uh, you have uh, destination information, you have visas and passports, um, and so uh, the, the the question is uh, how much transparency can you put in front of a, of, of a buyer without curating the experience, sure. right? So information overload is very possible, in which case you stand being accused of not curating or pay, playing your role. Uh, on the other hand, if you do curate, there is, you know, um, you always leave uh, uh, open the possibility uh, of being, uh, you know, uh, suspected of lack of transparency. But I think there, is, there are sufficient checks and balances out there today for people to independently verify uh, what's right and what's wrong. And I think it's a pretty, if you ask me, I think it's a hugely honest ecosystem, unless you're operating at the very fragmented end where you know you, you always have exceptions to the norm and, and outliers. Well, Jaitip, how would you characterize the various players in this corporate travel ecosystem? And in your view, how can they better collaborate? First, let's, let's understand the market as such. Uh, in the entire, you know, what can be classified as you know, business travel, you know, not all are large corporates. In, in India, uh, there are a significant number of, you know, medium enterprises, if I may say so. So today about 90% of the market is not held by the established, you know, corporate or what is called as TMC, travel management, you know, companies. They only hold 10%, the established in 90% is with, you know, uh, either the companies uh, do it themselves or it's, it's through uh, smaller, you know, travel agencies. As long as the corporates, uh, see the TMCs as uh, their partner and not like suppliers, vendors, the issues around transparency and, and you know, loopholes around those could you know, fast uh, disappear. Of course, it's not only the corporate's responsibility has to be balanced, the TMCs also need to deliver you know, on the bottom line as well as the other factors like safety or, or you know, productivity, so on and so forth. One initiative which uh, FCM uh, in association with KPMG we've been doing and this is the third year that we have come out with a industry white paper, you know, which is uh, on the trends of the corporate travel management and, you know, what, what are the factors and then so on and so forth. Dr. Pai, my next question is to you. Do you believe that larger players and smaller players alike need to seriously re-evaluate their existing corporate travel programs? And if so, what are the factors that they need to take into consideration? As far as your transparency is concerned, let me revisit that. Whenever a corporate uh, engages any TMCs, they are very clear in what, what they want, from whom they want. So the transparency is basically taken care of at that particular end. Then uh, the question of a person who is a TMC, how he delivers, what he does, it's, he is no more a vendor for us. It's, it's a partnership basically. Whether it's a small organization or a big organization, the players are the same, the suppliers are the same, the contents are the same. So I feel the small organization now somewhere has to pull up their socks and get themselves organized to avail all these facilities in the future. You know, and Rakshit, when we talk about corporate travel management, I believe the elephant in the room is risk, whether it be financial risk, whether it be execution risk, safety risks, and the list really goes on. So what can corporate travel management programs do to better mitigate this risk, both in the mind of the decision makers and on ground? as far as the realities? To my mind, there is a control risk, which is uh, most companies that have comprehensive travel management needs have a high need for transparency, for information, and control over their programs, right? Uh, there's a broad spectrum of users out there. There are some very learned people that run very sophisticated programs and therefore don't have the same transparency concerns because they, you know, their their subject matter expertise is, is very high, sure. right? Uh, and then you have some, you know, you at the other end of the spectrum, you have people that are not, don't understand the space very well, uh, haven't immersed themselves, and therefore approach it with some degree of suspicion. For whom we are trying to improve the information space by publishing content that's relevant to them, as 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 Jyotip said, right? Uh, so I think the, that that you know um, financial and operational control risk is largely taken care of by improving the information environment and and solving for your information asymmetry um, out in the marketplace. The second bit is around regulatory risk, right? Uh, I think this is something that that the, the on the supply side or on the demand side the industry hasn't 
fully understood yet. And uh, for me, there are some interesting conundrums that are presented by things like GDPR and uh, our own data protection regulation that's, uh, that's imminent, that in many ways will be more um, stringent than, in, than, than international standards. Welcome back to our special feature, FCM Presents, Redefining Corporate Travel Management. Well, Dr. Pai, from your experience, who is the leading decision maker from within the company that is offering their employers flexibility, simplicity, choice, better integrating their needs and wants into the corporate travel program? See, it depends on corporate to corporate. I'll tell you, the safety was never, never taken into consideration as far as Indian corporates are concerned earlier. But now, uh, looking at the Fortune 500 companies, people have started taking that as has a prime uh, this thing, and people are engaging themselves in various various uh, exercise of SOS and uh, emergency uh, 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 centers and all these things. See, your geographically and uh, the way you perform on your business, it depends on what type of businesses are you in. If it is an IT, if it's you're in oil and gas businesses. So it requires a lot of reikis to be done, a lot of things to be done, homework to be done before sending your employees across. Otherwise, earlier it was the ATP, you know, average ticket price, what, what falls into the kitty, you know. Because all this comes out with a cost, of course. So the cost adds into your uh, ticket, ticket cost or whatever you can call it as. So now people are aware that uh, thanks to the technological platform. It's the turnaround time in travel is very important because something which, which is wanting now can be purged a little later, which, is, which can't be in use. So technology is playing a very important role here because things like what, what is said, uh, you know, earlier it was a B2B or a B2C. You know, B2B being a corporate travel, B2C being a leisure travel or whatever. Now, now it's gone beyond, you know, it's B2, B2D and B2E. Now, if you ask me what is B2D, I'll tell you it is the dynamism of process. If you ask me what is E, E is expectations and then experiencing it. So people are going further down from whatever was the earlier way of evaluating things and the deliveries. It's the TMC which understands because they, they, they go across various corporates, they know the nerves, what is expected from them. So the deliveries are accordingly molded, you know. Of course, safety is one aspect. Other than that, there is wow factor, there is services. Satisfaction doesn't have a definition, so so it can go beyond things. It's endless. Endless. So things have been taken care of, and based on the corporates, they do a balancing act. So whatever is expected, they, the deliveries are maintained accordingly. Well, Rakshit, India is on the cusp of reaping a rich demographic dividend. So my question to you is, does that uniquely position the Indian workforce to help drive the adoption of travel-friendly tools and technologies like no other country or geography? Yeah, it's not just a demographic dividend, right? It's also a dividend of deregulation, which is it was a market where you effectively took products to market and the market didn't have choice, right? Uh, now you've got a, a different sort of demographic coming through. They don't like to be told what to do. They vote with their feet. If you don't have a great travel program, they resign and leave. Right? If the, you can't offer them flexibility, they quit um, overnight. Uh, and conversely, they'll take pay cuts to come and work in environments where they feel they have the flexibility, they have, they have some degree of social connect, and they can, they can do uh, whatever um, they, they wish to do. So I think it's a very interesting stage in the, in the evolution of this, in, of this market, where models that have historically uh, been sort of crafted from the supply side are now getting shaped from from the demand side. So users are now voicing their views, voting with their feet, voting with their wallets, and saying, look, this bit of the service works for me, this bit of the of, of the service doesn't. So it is, uh, uh, demographically, we've got a market that's going to accept new forms of 
distribution, new uh, sources of content, uh, new ideas with which to 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 uh, put together solutions. And uh, you know, a lot of the historic sort of limitations will not apply. Uh, but equally, I think from a a market evolution point of view, I think we've got. From the supply side, we have things coming through now. You've got cheap capital chasing, you know, ideas. Uh, you've got people thinking up new models, business models in their in their garages, and it's all it's all happening here right now. You know, Jaydeep, we've talked a fair amount about the various players in the corporate travel ecosystem, and my question is: Are there appropriate benchmarks in place to evaluate their performance? I think there's some work which needs to be done, at least in the Indian context. Firstly, you know, as I said, uh, only 10% of the market thereabouts is, is an established, uh, you know, regulated uh, sector. The rest of it is not. Uh, other point is about 70 to 80% of Indian, if I may say so, corporates, their annual travel spend is uh, not even more than one or two crore rupees. So I think the focus and attention hence is a little bit low. But there are industries, for instance, BPO or you know IT enabled, where uh, travel uh, related expenses is you know upwards of uh, two and a half, three percent of their revenues. And so I think there there are certain benchmarks. I would think that somehow till now the large corporates often uh, go by you know the cost as the primary parameter, and then perhaps you know safety and uh, transparency, and then employee productivity in some sort of order. But cost uh, is something which which still drives. Uh, often probably. Overlooking that, it's not only the price of a ticket or a night of, of stay, which is important, but there are either either you know, back end costs and and front end costs, and of course there is an entire cost associated with uh, violating any regulatory, yeah, compliance you know, policy yes. compliance costs, which uh, doesn't often appear unless it happens. Those have huge penalties, up to four percent of your global turnover. So in that context, the benchmark needs to be far more holistic and I think that's an area in my opinion uh, you know the Indian corporates need to do um, a lot of work there. Look and to be honest with you I think we have ourselves to blame there as well right because there was always a section of the market so advice is available sure. you can source it right and uh, you know there was always a section of the market that knew what needed to be done that was aware of international developments that was that had the capability to customize and make it relevant in an indian sort of marketplace i think if the rest of the market doesn't follow we you know we shouldn't we, we shouldn't look around and try and figure out why that is as you know as as a player in the ecosystem we feel very strongly about our sense of responsibility that says look let's learn from our international players let's try and figure out what the local market's telling us in terms of user experience and 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 regulate demands let's try and pull together benchmarks that make sense here and let's voluntarily try and adhere um, to them even if the customer does not particularly enforce it on you contractually or for that matter isn't even aware of you know or that he he deserves the expectation of a certain service standard right so I think it's really up to us and the people that are are, are, are embracing that and going on and and constantly tweaking them and raising the bar themselves I think those are the people that are starting to help consolidate this hugely fragmented marketplace and the others will get left out and that's just evolution well speaking of what the customer deserves you know I know that FCM Travel Solutions has collaborated with KPMG on this you know, in-depth white paper, redefining corporate travel management, uh, making the case that corporate travel needs to be more value-driven. But in that equation, how do we strike the balance and still ensure it's cost-effective? Look, I think the first thing we need to do is we need to elevate the conversation, all right? Uh, I think there are too many CEOs and CFOs in India Inc. that don't pay this pay sufficient attention to this. It's a strategic lever for the company. Uh, if you talk about the services economy in India and the growth of services of the services sector in India, in the services sector what you have, you know, you have people, infrastructure, travel. It's your third largest cost bucket, full stop. So from a cost point of view, it's certainly sensitive enough for you to want to look look at it. Uh, from a risk point of view, these are your people, your ideas, your talent. This is where this is the future of where your business is headed and you know their 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 self being, their comfort levels and their you know um, and and their their personal safety is something that uh, uh, that you need to pay sufficient attention to. So for me, the first thing I would do is I would tell leaders, directors, board members um, in, in, in corporate environments um, to pay more attention to what I think is an underappreciated and potentially um, uh, certainly less well understood um, area that's of strategic importance to them. 
And gentlemen, by way of closing comments, if I can have each of you in a single sentence describe to me what you believe the future of corporate travel looks like. Dr. Pai, we'll start with you. The future of corporate travel, uh, I think so, the speed what it has taken place, I, I think it's a proper thing like what Rakshit said and what Jaydeep said. Some small corporates have one crore, two crore, there's no point for them to uh, to buy a machine gun to kill a fly, you know. So, so, so they have to go step by step. So, there are many uh, huge corporates or MNCs which have global offices, which, which are having offices in India as well. So, they are patronizing whatever has been followed in global. So, Indian corporates, to be very frank, they don't easily accept what is already given to them in the platter. They want to twig it, modernize it, and uh, customize it in the Indian way of. Uh, it, it's the betterment of the way they handle. So that that is where the challenge is. So the twigging, the redevelopment, the 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 requirements, the scope requirement has for the Indian corporate has has been done, and the integration happens that way. So I think so. Corporate travel, to be very frank, uh, the future will be on a digital platform. The expectations can be measured. The services can be measured, and the reviews happens automatically based on that parameters. Jaydeep, offer us a glimpse. What does the future of corporate travel look like in your view? So I think, you know, India along with China and Indonesia will be the largest corporate market together in expected to in 2035. It's high growth market. So uh, the travel management companies, I, I, I would expect them to do pretty well, provided they keep, you know, the focus on the traveler, their experience, their productivity, while, you know, complying with the policy uh, framework of the corporates. So that's, that's my closing comment. Rakshit, the future of corporate travel in India and elsewhere, your predictions? Look, uh, in my view, I think players in the ecosystem that vigorously pursue uh, taking friction out of the the end-to-end -end travel experience that use a combination of technological capabilities and human intelligence uh, to deliver solutions that are relevant to individual users of the travel service, I think those are the people that will make a dent in the universe. Thank you, gentlemen, for those groundbreaking takeaways. And that brings our special feature, FCM Presents, redefining corporate travel management to a close. Thanks for watching. Pharma itself is an industry where the spend on corporate travel is very high. Managing a 4,000 people's travel within the country and abroad is not always very easy. Number two, as an industry, there are a lot of, uh, you know, uh, the seminars and so on and so forth uh, generally happens nationally and internationally. So still the demand is nascent in terms of an overall development of the travel uh, policies. But uh, technically speaking, there are demands in terms of flexibility, both operational the time lags or the preferences of airlines, preference of the hotels. So the negotiating power probably of the, of the people and the companies are different. Uh, to me, that new age uh, business uh, people, uh, the employees, will be probably the future of a different way of travel management when it comes to a very discerning demand which is of two nature. Number one, it's a flexibility. Number two, supported by technology. In case these are two not there, I think it will be very difficult for any organization to maintain a healthy employee relationship. Uh, this corporate travel per se has not changed majorly uh, in an Indian context. Till the time the pharma companies from this country has started moving into the rest of the world market or emerging markets, uh, so those exports and those gradual development uh, actually demanded a different kind of a travel plan uh, that an industry must take care. And this is a lot of demanding because this is not an only a developed nation that where you need to travel. You need to travel to places which are, which are maybe a moderate in terms of overall flexibility and facilities. So as an industry, it's critical and it's important that we look into our different uh, overall you know, strategic planning in the corporate travel management. So first and foremost is safety, which is of paramount importance across the Wellspin Group. The second one is efficiency. And by efficiency, what I really mean is the entire travel solution 
has to be cost efficient and has to be something which is of ease, convenience and comfort. Uh, that is the second bit. And the third one is uh, the entire integration so far as the system is concerned. Uh, that is again the convenience part of it, but how does one really you know enter into a travel solution, get the expense claim done uh, and ensure that the entire ease of doing things is also there at a single click. I think these are the three features that we look for uh, in the travel solution. The new gen uh, is adapting to a high tech, uh, an efficient structure and um, they are possibly you know logging it uh, from anywhere. Uh, so, it is absolutely flexible. So, they are 24 by 7 connected with work and uh, travel as it seeks. There is definitely a lot of convenience with respect to the overall uh, uh, telepresence and all of that coming into play. So, virtual and digital is also coming into play. So, one does find some amount of unwanted uh, travel that that is really brought down. So, the convenience of connect is bringing down some amount of corporate travel. But having said this, uh, I think culturally uh, one does need to connect with uh, all your multi locations as a workplace. So, I do not see the overall travel spend coming down dramatically, but I would put the entire growth at about 10 to 15 percent kind of a growth rate that I see in the near future.